do away with Bible study and preach. Amen. Good to see everybody here tonight. Amen. Good to see everyone here. Are you, all the students are gone to youth convention, and we're expecting a great report back from them. We got some sick folks. Sister Rhonda needs prayer. Uh, we want to, she texts right before church, want to remember Sister Heidi still, remember Sister Barker, Sister uh, Norman, Brother Doyle, Sister Virginia. Uh, we've uh, just got a lot of unspoken requests, a lot of different things going on around us. And uh, does anybody have a request of prayer over here on my right? Yes, sir. All right. Sister Sharon? Yes, yes. I'm glad you did. Sister Rita? All right. Here in the middle? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, absolutely, yes, ma'am. All right, all right, Mac. Okay, Sister Eloise. Yes, Sister Margaret. All right, Sister Terry. Yes, yes, Brother Bernard. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, sir. Sister Nadine. All right, Brother Ronnie. Absolutely. Absolutely. Red. All right. We sure will. Up here. All right. All right. Remember my Aunt Judy, Daddy's sister? Um, we buried her husband, my Uncle Lonnie, passed away. And uh, we went and did the funeral today, and she was really struggling. So let's remember her. Sister Nadine? Yes, 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 Caleb Spillers. Remember Mama, she's down in Louisiana helping them get through this time. Uh, pray for revival, always. Pray for our country. Pray for Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. We got to stay with them. Got to stay with them. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray together right now. God in heaven, we love you. We worship you. We magnify you. We know there's nobody beside you. You're the only true God. You hear and answer prayer. We believe in you. You've, you've healed us. You've delivered us. You've blessed us. The evidence is always before us of your faithfulness to us. I pray, God, that you will hear our cry, hear our prayer as we intercede for those that are sick in their body and who are afflicted and discouraged and downtrodden and downhearted. I pray, God, that you will help us, Lord, be aware. Help us, Lord, to love with that perfect love, perfect love, God, that you've shown us. I pray, Lord, you bless this service tonight. Pray for our children, our students, Brother Richard, Brother Tripp, that gone off to youth convention. I pray they get incredible blessing tonight. I pray, God, that there's power, demonstration of the Spirit and of power in this place tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let's sing. been there, hear this song, I let me be the testimony. Like
presence of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. I wish for just a moment in this room, just a moment, not for long, Brother David, but just for a moment, that hopelessness, we could feel it. Then he'd take it away and we would remember how great it was for his amazing grace to reach down. Brother Larry, for his hand to reach further down than I could reach up. Come on, if you could just feel that hopeless feeling for just a moment and then start praising him because it's not there all the time. Because we have hope. The Bible says we have hope as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. I feel the presence of the Lord in this house tonight. And he held me close so I wouldn't let go. Do you know the Lord is for you? He wants you to win and not lose. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be seated if you'd like to tonight. We're going to receive the evening offering. And uh, we remind you that we do still have the GiveLify app. For those that are watching online, you can use the app here in the church. Uh, you can mail it in to Post Office Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 63869. And you can do it PayPal, which is on our website, www.riverbendpentecostals.com. And uh, then, of course, we still fill the pans up. And I'm going to say it again. I say it every Wednesday. You guys are incredible in your giving. And uh, we're getting ready to get a plan of action. And uh, we're going to get some things paid off. We're going to get some things bought. We're going to move forward. Got some a lot of work we're going to get done. And uh, there's some great things happening in the house of God. And it's in no small part to the faithfulness of the men and women sitting in this house right now and those watching us online. So thank you for your giving. And I told you when I became pastor, we probably wasn't never going to be rich. I don't know if y'all remember that or not, but I told you, I said, it's not going to, it's not going to get piled up in the bank because there's too much, too much kingdom work to be done out there. Amen. And and we're going to support missionaries, foreign and home missionaries. We're going to support evangelists. We're going to support ministries far and wide. And the Lord's just going to keep blessing. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll blow your mind. Is basically what he said. Ain't that right? That's right. And we're seeing it. Amen. We're seeing it. So let's, uh, let's pray the prayer. I don't know if Brother Shannon can find it for us or not. But uh, uh, Chrislyn, do you know this prayer? Come on up here and get this microphone. If you don't know it, if, if you don't know it, you, you ready? You sure you know it? If you mess up. <laughs> Won't lead us in this prayer. Pray with us right now. Upon the authority of your word I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking on divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, and I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, girl. Bring your offering to Amen. Once I covered in prison, I dwell. Oh 
the Lord. I'm glad to be free. I'm glad to be free. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. Amen. We'd like for the River Bend kids to come to the front. Amen. They're excited tonight. And, uh, we're excited for them. Y'all learn them Bible, them books of the Bible. We'll have you up here saying them. We'll have you up here saying them. Amen. Boy, I love to see this group growing. Man, man, man. All right. Little bye-bye. Why don't you lead them back, baby? Go ahead. Y'all have a good time back there tonight. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Logan said y'all snoozed and lose. He took off. He took off. They're going to have a big time back there. Amen. Boy, that's exciting. That's so exciting. Like uh, the students will be staying in here tonight, those that didn't go on the trip. And let me tell you this. Uh, youth conventions, youth camps, uh, youth rallies, it's an investment that pays eternal dividends. If something comes around, hock your wedding ring. I mean that. If it means getting your kids involved in church activity, it's important. It is important. And uh, we, uh, uh, I just really, I felt that before service. And I probably should have said it when everybody was in here. But uh, uh, there's, there's enough of the world getting slathered all over these babies every day that they live. That uh, uh, in, and uh, uh, North American Youth Congress was canceled and uh, because the city of Indianapolis wouldn't allow 35,000 people in that building. And, uh, but uh, we got some things going. Uh, going to perhaps partner with Brother Damesworth and have a, a youth function uh, in Pigeon Forge at that same time, but uh, we're going to do everything we can to make sure our kids get involved. And it's going to be a beautiful day when you see a youngin that wants to go somewhere but can't afford it and you open up your checkbook and take care of it for them. Be thinking about that. It's important to do that. Oh, hold on just a minute. Huh? It better, it better happen. There won't, there won't be a child not get to go do something or a student not get to go do something because they don't have the money. Not here, there won't be. Not here. Because we're going to invest in our kids. Amen. A little different tonight, I think. Not really sure. But uh, I, I thought I was going somewhere. And when I got there, Brother Jerry, I found out I wasn't going where I thought I was. And... Uh, but uh, uh, some incredible, don't have a handout tonight because this may slide over into a little more preaching instead of teaching if I get as excited as I was. If you ever look at my notes and you see I put stuff in bold on my iPad, that's where I plan to get cranked up at a little bit. So uh, this here is full of bold stuff. But John chapter number three, it's a very important chapter in the biblical uh, narrative, and especially with regard to salvation. Now, unfortunately, it is also one of the most uh, misunderstood chapters in the Bible. And we're not going to, that's not going to be the entire gist of our lesson tonight or message tonight, but it is going to lay the groundwork for it. And uh, I want you to know, I'm going to say this, and it's going out on TV, but. Uh, are we live out there? Okay. All right. I can't wait to tell Sister Scarlett it took three grown folks to do her one job back there when she gets back. But uh, I'm just teasing. I'm thankful for all the help we can get. I had somebody tell me again this week. I talked to them about a different thing. And they said, we got to get the Pentecost people to our business. And she said, GL, you got the biggest congregation in this whole town. She said, what in the world's going on down there, pretty much? People, part, 
We done about filled up the car wash, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? There was people parking plumb down past Brother Zip's house on Sunday, all the way there to the other side of the car wash. Uh, did, Chris, did you even get to park in the car wash, or was you on the other side of it? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're going to have to start running a bus here in town because we ain't got enough room for everybody to park. People are looking for something that's real, something that's solid, something they can grab a hold of and touch, something that moves them. And we, we don't want to just be religious. We're not. We're going to see people healed, their lives delivered and changed and set free. And we're going to be the example of strong marriage. We're going to have the best kids in school. Huh? Oh, come on now. Why not? Why not? Amen. John chapter number three, there's a man named Nicodemus that comes to Jesus in the nighttime. He is a Pharisee first, which is the most influential, most prominent, most respected religious uh, sect of the day, of Jesus's day, the early uh, 26, 27 AD. Um, they're very steeped in tradition and they're very prideful in their strict adherence to the law. But then Nicodemus, if I understand correctly, is also a member of the Sanhedrin, which is a special group within the Pharisees of about 75 members. And it is the highest court in the land, the highest authority before you get into Roman rule. It is, in short, the supreme court of Jerusalem and of the Israelites. And so Nicodemus is a man of influence and he's a man of means. And, and uh, so he come to see Jesus in the nighttime. Got any ideas why he came at night? He didn't want anybody to see him coming over there. And it, it was kind of a secret deal. Uh, but it would seem, it would seem that Nicodemus had been kind of chosen as a spokesman, that he wasn't there of just his own accord or his own curiosity because he told Jesus, he said, we know that you come from God because nobody can do the things you do except God is with him. Now, we know. You see, it was the operation of the supernatural. Miracles, signs, and wonders. It was a tangible witness of the Spirit of God that drew Nicodemus. And apparently, here we go, the we in verse number 2 tells us that Nicodemus isn't alone in his attraction to the operation of the supernatural. You see, Brother Billy, when the Pharisees got together at the coffee shop, they're talking about Jesus. And they're saying, we're not buying what he's selling. But we like it. We're attracted to the operation of the supernatural. We like what we feel. We like what we see. The operation of the supernatural. And so... The Pharisees, in their mind, they have it all together. They are the authority. They are the benchmark. They are what everybody, they, they, I don't want to really get into a lot of negative stuff, but they kind of were a messed up group of people. And it was the Pharisees that when they fasted, they wouldn't take a bath. They wouldn't change their clothes. They wouldn't wash their face. They wouldn't fix their hair. Why? Because they wanted everybody to know they were fasting. All right, it's true. It's true. Remember, they would, the, the Pharisees are the one that stood next to the publican in prayer. And the publican said, God have mercy on me. I don't have any business being here. Please have mercy on me. I'm not much good for anything, but just help me. And the publican stands there beside him. And Brother Billy, it's almost comical. The publican is praying and says, Lord, I thank you. I'm not like this sorry sucker here. Yeah, making a big old deal like, hey, I want to let all of y'all know I'm not as bad as him. Aren't you glad that that paradigm has shifted? Uh, aren't you glad that we do not have to get our validation from how religious people think we are? But when we come together and the, and the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move on us, uh, it aligns with that old saying, the ground is completely level at the foot of the cross. 
Uh, aren't you glad of that? Amen. It's, aren't you so excited about that? The Pharisees had it all together, except they could check off every box. Uh, they could check off every box of what they're doing, except for one thing. The supernatural was not operating among them. All right, There was not a supernatural witness of the Holy Ghost. So now it's drawing them. And because the, the Holy Ghost, the move of the Holy Ghost, what you feel in our services, huh? how about Sunday morning? What do you think about the presence of the Lord that was in this place Sunday morning? You can't deny it. Can't nobody deny it. All right, the power of the Holy Ghost is moving in a mighty way and it attracts people. All right, it draws people. Now, Jesus Christ it was not susceptible to flattery. You couldn't blow no smoke at the Lord because he doesn't pay attention to this outward stuff. He listens to what the heart is saying. All right, so he is not susceptible to flattery. He's like, okay, whatever, no big deal. This, this supernatural stuff is, is, uh, is not even what's supposed to be drawing you, but he's not going to let this opportunity pass to witness to this man, Nicodemus, in the night. And his, Nicodemus says, man, y'all, you do a lot of great miracles. You must come from God. And Jesus says, except the man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus is like, hold up. That ain't why I'm here. That's not why I'm here. Nicodemus is confused. Now understand this. He's not confused because what Jesus was saying was hard to be understood. And the concept of a new birth was not foreign to a Jewish mindset because they called the bar mitzvah new birth. If you, when you're baptized, even in the Old Testament, there was different things that are new birth. When a, when a man became a man, it was called a new birth. But he wasn't confused because what Jesus was saying was so hard to understand. But uh, he was confused that the Lord is making him aware of a truth that says there's something in you missing. Are you with me right now? Jesus is telling him, except you be born again, which Sister Maria, he's strongly inferring, Nicodemus, you ain't been born again, but Now Nicodemus comes, Brother David, and he's got all of his stuff together as far as on this plane is concerned. He's just not doing so good with the operation of the Spirit. So he's not coming to the Lord and saying, I want to get my life right. He's coming to the Lord and saying, what do we got to do to get the supernatural working in our lives? And Jesus said, except the man be born again or born of the water and Spirit, John 3 and 3 and John 3 and 5, he cannot see nor enter in the kingdom of heaven. Heaven. Now, for, the, for Jesus Christ to tell him there's a deficiency in him is the height of disrespect to a Pharisee. Now, um, in his way of thinking, it would be impossible that he was lacking in something to do with the Scripture. He's just interested in the supernatural. He's not interested in getting straightened out on daily living. Okay? Are you with me? Verse number 12. This is Jesus speaking. And he tells Nicodemus, If I have told you earthly things and you won't believe it, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things. Now you understand what are the heavenly things he's talking about. The operation of the supernatural. So, now here we go. I, 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 this never occurred to me till I began to study today and begin to see some things in some commentaries. Nicodemus is there talking to Jesus because he was drawn there. And even though the Pharisees are not Jesus fans... They cannot deny the evidence of the power of God working in and through Jesus Christ. 
They cannot deny that there's something working through him that causes people to be changed and people to be healed and people to be delivered. And it really uh, perplexes them because everybody is drawn to him, including them. They don't have no problem explaining why the poor and the downhearted and the downtrodden and the blind and the beggar and the lame are drawn to Jesus. Uh, but they don't quite understand. Oh, help me right now, Holy Ghost. Uh, they don't quite understand why they're being drawn to Jesus. Does that make sense? They understand why the losers are drawn to Jesus, but they don't understand why they're being drawn to Jesus because they don't agree with nothing he says because he's just a carpenter's son from Nazareth. He has no pedigree. He has no education. He's raised a carpenter's boy and now he comes preaching and teaching with authority and with demonstration and with power and it does not make sense. And now to add insult to injury, they're being drawn. Do y'all remember me telling you something? I'm going to say it right now. Am I doing all right tonight? Y'all with me? Do y'all remember me telling you when you're praying for somebody or you're drawn to witness to somebody and they turn into a world-class jerk after you start praying for them, don't get upset. Because generally, we talked about this in elements class. That's what was happening with Paul. He got under conviction when Stephen didn't lash out. Still, he prays for him. What you going to do when you're trying to kill somebody and while they're going down, they're praying for the Lord to forgive you? Uh, we, remember we talked about that, Brother Billy. Understand this. When the Lord starts making headway in somebody's life, most generally they're going to fight it. Primarily because the power of the Holy Ghost draws you to a place of humility. Not of exaltation. Remember I used the example? Nobody, 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 nobody in their right mind when you were a little boy playing wiffle ball in the backyard pretending that you were mighty Casey who struck out. Okay? Nobody pretended that. Everybody wants to be a hero. But when you come to Jesus Christ, he's not looking for another hero. He's looking for disciples. You remember I told you? Anybody can be a hero in the right circumstances. Anybody can be, brother, brother Terrence can be on the way home and somebody be uh, turned over in the ditch and he can go over there and push his truck up against them and flip them back over and save them out and get his picture on the newspaper. And the truth is anybody can do that if the circumstances are right. The Lord's not looking for another hero. He's looking for consistency. And he's looking for somebody in ordinary days, ordinary streets that will live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. We have a little trouble with that. Okay? And that's what Nicodemus and the Pharisees, they were looking. You know why they wanted the operation of the supernatural? Because it validated them in the eyes of the world. And the reason why they had such a hard time messing with Jesus Christ is he wasn't looking for glory. He wasn't looking for people to brag on him. He was just looking for people he could touch their lives and heal them and deliver them. Hear me right now. There is no limit to, to what God can do through you if you don't care who gets the credit. That's right. Do I have to say that again? There's no limit to what God can do through us if we don't care who gets bragged on for it. I want you to know this right now. I'm not saying this bragging. I'm not saying this to be ugly. But I'm going to tell you right now. There are people in this community and the surrounding communities. And you're, I'm going to be teaching, teaching to them right now. They wait till church is over so they can watch us online and nobody see that they were on here. 
And please, I'm not throwing stones, throwing rocks. I love everybody, every movement, everybody that goes and prays on Sunday. I don't care what church they do it in. I love them and I'm proud for it. But I want you to know people are tired of dead religion. People are tired of going to church and it does nothing for them. I saw somebody today that this guy was, was teaching a, a study. Man, help me right now. Holy Ghost. Uh, this guy was teaching a study on baptism and the essentiality of baptism in the salvation process. Uh, and the Bible says in John 3, except the man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he can't see or enter the kingdom of heaven. When they asked men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And this lady commented on that. She said, I knew there was something wrong when I got baptized. I didn't feel nothing and nothing changed in my life. I got to go and get baptized again and I got to get it done the right way and for the right reason. Hear me right now. People are looking for something that's real. Oh, can I go a step further? They're going to find it right here. They're going to find it right here. we got to be who we're supposed to be. We are one God, apostolic, tongue-talking, holy rollers, uh, born-again, heaven-bound believers in the liberating power of Jesus' name. Listen, if I didn't think this was it, I'd go somewhere else where it was. We're too close to the coming of the Lord to be playing games. We're too close to the coming of the Lord to be bound down to somebody's religious tradition. We have got to open up the Word of God and let God be true and every man a liar. Excuse me. Nicodemus is there because he was drawn there. The Pharisees are not Jesus fans. But they can't deny the power of God. Jesus is in effect telling Nicodemus, I'm glad you're here. I've been wanting to talk to some of y'all. Because there's some things regarding the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven and salvation. There's some things regarding the kingdom that you don't know, Nicodemus. There's some things I need to show you. There's some things that you're deficient in. He says, hear me now. He says, and you are a master in Israel. And you don't know this? You want to know why? You want to know why? They made a living out of reading the Bible. It was their job to read and study the Bible. Every seven years, they read aloud the entire Torah, the law. Every seven years, they heard it read. They read, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will see visions. Your young men will see dreams. And that was the problem they had with it. They wanted to keep it to their little circle. They wanted to stay the religious elite. And here comes Jesus Christ preaching a message that from the gutter to the White House, you can be changed, you can be healed, you can be delivered. Not only that, but you can go forth and minister and you can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You can be used of God. You can know the Bible. Come on, hear me right now. Do you know, I can't remember the year. God have mercy and please forgive me. But do you know that it was in the 12, 13, and 1400s, just a few hundred years ago, they were still killing people for trying to read the Bible? Do you know when William Tyndale, one of the first translators of the Bible from the original transcripts into a mass production, was burnt at the stake because the religious leaders did not want everybody able to read the Bible and figure it out for themselves. They wanted to have a bunch of mental midgets who would just believe everything they were told and not get anything for themselves. And that was the trouble right here is Jesus Christ came. God help me right now. Jesus Christ came preaching whosoever will. Let them come and drink of the waters of life freely. And the religious world said, no, we can't do that. Because if everybody can do it, we won't be important no more. Oh, 
Lord Jesus didn't take on the form of an angel. He didn't take on the form of a God. He took on the form of a man. Because in the world you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Now hear me right now. I'm glad you're here, Nicodemus. Are y'all with me on that? Nicodemus don't like Jesus, but he can't deny that the power of God is working through him. So he comes to find out about not much different than old Simon over in the book of Acts. Not much different when this old boy pulled out his billfold and said, hey, I'll pay you for that power. And Peter said, you better shut your mouth. He said, your heart ain't right. If you think it can be bought. That's kind of what Nicodemus was doing. Boy, we'd like to have some of that. We, we want to do it on the slick. And Jesus said, I'm glad you're here. Because there's some things you don't know. There's some things you're not aware of. And I want to tell you. You've been reading the Bible your whole life, Nicodemus. But you're missing it. You're missing it. I wish I had a dollar for everybody I've taught a Bible study to that said, why didn't I see this before? Huh? What does the Bible say? If our, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Why? Because the God of this world has blinded their minds. Lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine in unto them. The Lord's trying to break through the blinded mind. Verse number 12 which I just read to you, when he says, if I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? That's not just talking about this conversation. Because the Lord understands Nicodemus is not just there for Nicodemus. Nicodemus is a leader and then a leader among leaders. He's there because they've been talking about, what are we going to do about this Jesus guy? All right? He's not only referring to this conversation, but he's referring to the general attitude the Pharisees had toward Jesus. You see, they're not buying his message of grace and truth, mainly because they want to preserve their place in the elite. And Jesus preaches a message that says anybody can understand the word and anybody can see the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost working in and through them. They don't believe, hear me right now, they don't believe what Jesus preaches but they can't deny the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to say that one more time. They don't believe the message Jesus is preaching. Which is, what's Jesus' first message? Does anybody remember? What's the first words Jesus came preaching? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he preached it to everybody. He didn't tickle anybody's ears. He preached the word. They don't believe what Jesus is preaching. But they cannot deny the power of the Holy Ghost. John 14, 11, Jesus says, Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. Hear me right now. We have to make sure. Please hear me. Please hear me. And I'm calling every man, woman, boy, or girl under the sound of my voice. I don't care if it's your first time here or you're going out like for your one millionth Sunday school pen. Hear me right now. We cannot afford to ever have one dead service. And the only person that you can ensure isn't dead is you. Has anybody thought about clapping and hollering this week? Huh? I got to tell you all something. Brother Shannon gave me a complex. He told me last night he went back and watched Sunday service. I'm finding out, Brother David, there's several folks doing that. And they're finding it's better the second time. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but when I got out here on the floor, that wasn't in my notes. But I kept asking myself, what does the voice of triumph sound like? Let me tell you what. There ain't no words. But when you are just overwhelmed with euphoria at winning, 
Brother Shannon said, I ain't going to tell you exactly what he said because y'all be mad at him. He's talking bad about me. Looking like a dummy up here, clapping my hands and hollering real loud. You better tell him the truth. But, <laughs> but he said he was having a terrible day yesterday until he started watching that message and saw me acting a fool right up here and realize how free it is to know who's on the throne and have him in place. We got to get that clap and holler stuff down. The book says it. Do you know that is the only place in the, we clap more than we do anything. And that's the only place in the Bible that tells you to clap. Right? We, we got to get the king in place. We can't afford, we cannot afford to have dead church. And I can't afford because it makes me mad. I want to get delivered from it. Y'all pray my strength in the Lord that I get delivered from getting mad when people will not worship. But it makes me mad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, that just went over like a ton of bricks. <laughs> But guess what? I ain't scared. <laughs> yep. Yep. Probably about the first six months. Uh-huh. Man, I brother. Well, the truth is, is Jesus Christ wasn't being negative toward Nicodemus. He was basically saying, you got here. I ain't going to play your game. I'm going to tell you the truth. But we're fixing to go there and just, that's where we're going here in just a minute, brother Billy. And we're going to see how I feel like Nicodemus was a messenger boy for all the Pharisees. When he says, we know you come from God. All right? But we're going to talk just a minute how they dealt with that. And quite frankly, you just led me into the whole gist of this message. Because ask yourself right now, why wouldn't they believe? Why? Why? They can't deny the power of the Holy Ghost working through him. Why wouldn't they believe? I ask myself that question, what in the world? Because Brother Billy, you, you open it up, so let's go to John chapter number 9. And we're going to see what the Pharisees do with the operation of the Holy Ghost. They can't deny it. So watch what happens. Are you ready, Freddie? I love it. I love this. This is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. And the punchline, the one at the end, I just want to say, yes. Like, I'd buy that guy a cup of coffee if I could connect with him. So, there's a blind man that Jesus, I preached about this. Jesus said, I'm, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. If you remember that from a few weeks ago, I, I preached from this first part. But Jesus sees a blind man. The disciples said, who sinned? This man or his parents that he'd be blind? The Lord said, didn't nobody sin, but I got to have some people I can heal so I can teach somebody some lessons. All right? So the glory of God can be manifest. So Jesus stops. Remember, if I told you he's on the run for his life, Jesus comes across this guy while they're trying to kill him. And so... He says that the, that the glory of God may be manifest in him. So Jesus sees a blind man and he, are you ready? Spits on the ground. Wallers it around a little bit till he's got some mud. Picks him up a couple of globs of it. Oh Lord. You understand Jesus was always about trying to bring people down so he could work with them. The Lord can't work with us if we're full of ourselves. 
That's pretty degrading, Brother Terrence. He made spit and dirt. Wallered it all around, mixed it up, picked him up a couple of handfuls of it, Brother David, and globbed it on that old boy's eyes. Oh, I wanted to preach on that tonight, brother. Oh, my goodness. That word says, and he made clay. Oh, I got so excited when I saw that. You do know that's what he did way back there in the garden, huh? When he formed man out of the dust of the ground, the Lord, oh, brother David, man, between you and brother Billy, y'all, everybody's going to hate y'all tonight because we're going to be here a minute. If I can't keep... He knows the creative power of dirt and the hand of God. He does his best work with his hands in the dirt. Huh? Look at here. He said, if I can't get you to believe earthly things, how can I get you to believe heavenly things? Do you understand? I told you this Sunday night, before every revival, there's got to be a sacrifice. Okay, there's got to be a struggle. Look at look here. He put that mud on that man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Now I'm going to ask you a question right now. Has anything supernatural happened yet? No, no. Nothing. Nothing. Spit dirt on the blind man's eyes and then he said go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the Bible says, are you ready for this? This is powerful and profound. And he went and washed. And guess what? Came seeing. Brother David, I felt a powerful unction when I read that tonight. The Lord has got to get us to the place. We talked about it last night. The Lord has got to get us to a place where it's just like that. He says, do it. We do it. And guess what happens? The, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. The very thing Nicodemus was looking for is loosed in him because he obeyed an earthly thing. Oh, come on, man. I got the Holy Ghost goosebumps on my kneecaps right now. Think about this. Old Naaman, old leper Naaman, he had some leprosy on him. And the prophet said, go wash in the Jordan River. And Naaman said, not today, brother. That's a nasty, funky, dirty river. And I got better back there. I'm not doing it. And the little servant pulled him and said, if he'd have asked you to do a great thing... The Lord wasn't asking him to do a great thing. He just wanted him to be obedient and to humble himself. Do y'all feel the Holy Ghost moving in here right now? Huh? He got to humble himself. You know, sometimes, uh, Brother Jerry, the Lord is just going to say, you got to do it this way. And you say, well, I don't want to do it that way. And the Lord's got to say, do you want the supernatural working? Because the supernatural only works when the natural, God, when the natural is in the right place. The supernatural can only work when uh, Abraham is on the right mountain. The the ram is not caught in the bush uh, in the wrong place. Uh, But when he got into the right place, uh, you know what he started calling it? Jehovah Jireh, which says, my God will provide. But first he had to get there. Oh, I don't want to preach right now, but I'm feeling it. You read it in the book, uh, and the Bible says uh, that Abraham went to a place God told him about. Uh, He packed up the mule, he got the wood, he got the boy, he got the servant, and he got the flint to make the fire. And he went for three days uh, doing what the Lord said. Uh, If the Lord will get you to just surrender a little bit, uh, that's why it's so important to step out of your pew sometimes uh, and make your way down to the altar and allow the Holy Ghost uh, to work in your life. He's just looking for somebody that will surrender themselves to him. And he washed and he came seeing. And look at here. Lord, help me get done tonight. And the neighbors all see him. And there's a change in him. He ain't blind no more. And they said, are you ready? They said, 
Is that the old boy that used to sit here and beg? Some of them said, I think it's him. Others said, no, it just looks like him. <laughs> so they said, what happened to you? Who are you? And he said, there was a man called Jesus. It's in there, read it. There was a man called Jesus who made clay and put it on my eyes. And he told me to go wash in the pool of Siloam. Do y'all want to wonder a little bit how the old boy made it to the pool when he couldn't see? He had to go around and somebody had to show him the way to the place to get healed. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And he said, I went and washed and I received my sight. So they brought him to the Pharisees. Same group Nicodemus came from. Brother Billy just led us here just a while ago now. Same group just a short time later. Maybe five to ten years. Maybe. But you understand what, does anybody know? Think about that, Brother Billy. They ain't been able to stop him. They ain't been able to shut him down. He's still healing. He's still delivering. He's still blessing. And they still don't know what to do about it. Why didn't they just join in with him? Huh? Why didn't they just say, you know what? If you can't beat him, join him. I wish I had a dollar for every person. There's some of them here tonight. I wish I had a dollar for every person that said, I'll never go to that Pentecost church. <laughs> Them folks is crazy. They believe a lot of crazy stuff, huh? I wish I had a dollar for it because I'd be a rich man. We'd build us a new building right now. But I want you to know there's a whole bunch of them in the house right now. And I've seen several of them that have humbled themselves and obeyed the word of God and repented of their sins, been baptized and filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost because there's a draw in there you can't deny it. And when you get here and you feel the waves and the power of the Holy Ghost and you can't sit still and you can't keep your mouth shut and you can't keep your hands down. It's real. It's real. I know it's real. Man. And they came. Now listen. They got the witness in front of them. And they said, the Pharisees the old boy comes. This is the second time he's testified. They said, what happened to you, boy? He said, well, there was a man called Jesus who made clay. And he put it on my eyes. And he told me to go to the pool of Siloam and wash it off. And I did. And he healed me. And the Pharisees said, now, what did Nicodemus say when he first came to the Lord? We know you come from God. Because can't nobody do what you're doing except God's with him. Now I want you to look what they just said right here. The Pharisees said, this man's not of God. Uh -huh. This man's not of God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Because he had the audacity to make clay and heal a blind man on the Sabbath. And then other folks said, they're the smart ones, they asked the Pharisees and said, wait a minute, how can somebody who's a sinner do such great miracles? And so they were divided. So finally they asked the man who'd been healed. They said, okay, tell us what you think about this Jesus guy. And he said, he's a prophet. Verse 18. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight 
until they called the parents. They're not going to start believing yet, but just they called the parents. They called the young man's parents who for the, his whole life been having to speak for him because he was blind. And they asked the parents and said, is this your son? Who you, look at here, who you say was born blind. Come on, man, what's the old boy got to do? The whole town's been seeing him out there shaking his cup. And they, some of them said, no, he looks like him. Now they brought his parents and said, are you ready for this? They said, is this your son who you say was born blind? You know what they're trying to say? Been faking all these years. He couldn't have been really blind because whatever happened? Here we're going to revert back to Brother Billy's comments. Whatever happened to, we know you came from God. Sister Maria, why didn't they just say, don't understand it all, can't figure it all out, but I can't deny it. I'll be there Sunday morning. Huh? Well, sign me up. Best thing going. Ain't nobody else going around seeing people healed, lives changed, people delivered, miracle signs and wonders. He's the best thing happening. Let's go. His parents said, now we know that's our son. And we know that he's born blind. Now how he sees, we don't know. And we don't know who opened his eyes. Look at here. He's of age. <laughs> Ask him. He'll speak for himself. Now this word spake his parents, verse 22, because they feared the Jews, because the Jews had done spread the word. That if any man did confess that he was Christ, they'd get kicked out of the church. Does anybody see the irony in that? Huh? What could the Lord have done in the synagogue if they had turned him loose instead of trying to clamp him down? Then they call this old boy back again, verse 24. And they said unto him, are you ready for this? You talk about some dumb bunnies. Oh my goodness, man. I mean, I'm not being disrespectful, but come on. Maybe, Brother Billy, maybe 10 to 15 years. They've been battling him, and he keeps on doing miracles, signs, and wonders. It, what he's got is undeniable. Okay, it, it ain't been 10 to 15 years. He only had three and a half years, but it's been, been a good long while. Oh, sure they believe. There's later on, there's later on the Bible says that a whole bunch of the Pharisees we believe. I'm going to preach about it someday. But a whole bunch of the Pharisees believed, but they wouldn't tell nobody because they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Oh, for, for sure. For sure. But Brother Shannon, old Roger used to tell us delayed obedience is disobedience. You ain't going to be able to stand before the Lord and say, I believed, but I was chicken. Huh? Huh? They said, give God the praise. We know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. And he says one of the most powerful and profound, beautiful, makes me want to just run laps. He said, well, here's the truth. I don't know if he's a sinner or not. But what I do know I was blind. Now I see. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, can't nobody take your testimony from you and can't nobody deny the power of the Holy Ghost working in you and we don't have to decide, well, what about this and what about that? The truth is, I know that I've been changed by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not what I used to be and more than that, I'm not what I'm going to be. 
Boy, the old spiritual, they used to sing. Y'all better be glad I can't sing because I'd be hitting on that piano right now. But they used to say, I know I've been changed. You want to know why? Because the angels in heaven done signed my name. Can I tell you? There ain't no denying the power of the Holy Ghost in somebody's life. But there's always going to be somebody that just will not believe. He said, there's no doubt you're from God. Stand with me. But with their maniacal desire to discredit Jesus. And they had a conflict with their own lying eyes because the man was healed standing before them. Jesus said, if you won't believe earthly things, I can't tell you heavenly things. He said, take your old muddy eyeball self down to the pool of Siloam. He didn't say Bethesda. He didn't say no other pool. He said Siloam. And you know what the blind man had to do? He had to ask somebody. You know where Siloam is? Not that other pool. Not the bath. Not the, you know, creek running down. Not the stream. Pool of Siloam. That's what the man said. You do understand. He ain't never seen before. He'd never felt the power of the Holy Ghost before. He'd never felt the power of Jesus Christ working in his life. And I'm going to tell you this. I feel like. He didn't feel nothing while he was rubbing on his eyeballs. But when he came up out of that water. Oh my goodness. There's always going to be a call to you, Brother Jerry. I preached it here a while back. Remember? Come go with me. Come go with me. But Brother Terrence, it's always going to take some humility. We talked about this last night. One of these times I'm going to start taping Tuesday nights and let y'all see how powerful it is. Maybe I shouldn't. But all of this ain't hard. If we'll submit ourselves, humble ourselves, and just do what he says. Believe the earthly thing. Say, well, I don't know about this and I don't know about that. Hey, hey, I don't know it all either. Man, I know it seems like I do. <laughs> I'm a long way from there. I'm a long way from there. But I do know that I was in a bad place one time. And I thought my ministry was gone. And I thought every dream I ever had was gone. And I knelt down right over in that area somewhere and I told the Lord, I've done messed up everything. And if there's any way, I've tried to fix this, I've tried to do this, I've tried to make it right. And the more harder I try, the worse it gets. I need you. So I'm just going to give it to you. And I stand before you now, a living testimony of the redeeming, forgiving power and beauty of God's amazing grace. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. I know some people don't like that song. I love it. it. Chases me down. Fights till I'm found. Beautiful Savior. What do you think about the Lord? Now, what do you think about the Lord? <laughs> Dear God in heaven, we believe in you and the power of your word. God, I, I'm a living testimony of your grace and mercy. Your long suffering. I pray God that everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray God for those that are that are uh, hesitant, and those that are fearful, and those that maybe have, with their mouth, mocked 
the move of the Holy Ghost, but with their heart secretly desired. I pray, God, that there is a, a extra unction that begins to rise up in men and women all over southeast Missouri, everywhere that the internet has reached them. I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost will let them know they're loved and they're valued and they're treasured. And if they'll just follow the leading of the Spirit, they will arrive at the place where their every dream will come true because the dreams change to the will of God, not the will of man. The plan of God will come to pass in fruition. Let it happen in every man, woman, boy, or girl's life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. We just want to believe. We used to sing that. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. That's how it happens. But you've got to believe him in earthly things before he'll reveal himself in heavenly things. Everybody with me tonight? Pray for our kids. They'll be gone tonight, tomorrow, and uh, Friday. Come home Saturday, I believe it is. Uh, we want them all to come back fired up and ready to go. And find out where they're sitting on Sunday morning and sit next to them. I ain't playing. I ain't playing. Especially if you've been struggling a little bit. Them kids are going to come back stoked. They always do. And I want to be a part of it, don't you? And pray for the kids. Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we have Elements class. We had a wonderful class last Sunday, and it's going to be better this Sunday. And uh, then at 11 o'clock is Easter Sunday. All right, you going to bring your basket, Brother Terrence? Huh? Let me tell you a little secret. Most of them kids don't like the real eggs. They like the fake ones because they think they got a prize in it. Me, I like the real ones. I do like them. But we're going to have a house full. I'm believing it in Jesus' name, aren't you? Amen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. I know you might have some friends and some cousins and some kids and some guests with you. Don't be no sissy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't, don't wimp out on me. Okay? They are expecting... An apostolic explosion. And that happens when we clap our hands and shout with a voice of triumph. Let's put the king where he belongs and let the enemy know and let's give it everything we got. What if this is the last Easter Sunday before the Lord comes? Huh? Man, let's give it everything we got. Pray before you come. Pray before you come. Pray that the anointing will be on all of us and we'll have a mighty move of God. What do you say? Amen. Huh? You believe we can? Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Love every one of you. Yeah, if you're going to go to the ladies' conference, you better get signed up. If you didn't think you was going, you might ought to believe earthly things so you can get heavenly things. That means sign up. You don't want to miss it. It's great. You're dismissed.